go through the valley, I must believe that I'm going to come to the mountaintop. If I believe that I'm going to be crucified, I must believe that I'm going to resurrect. Can you say amen? amen. Enoch took God so serious that one day God just took him away. They couldn't find his body. They didn't know what happened to him. Enoch took God's word so serious that because Enoch was born and was alive and invested in God and God invested in him and God took him serious and, 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 and he took God serious, our lives are never the same. Enoch taught us how to herd animals and instead of just leaving them in the wild. Enoch taught, taught us how to break up the, 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 the ground and, and, and seed and the plant and to take weeds out. And Enoch taught us all these different uh, techniques, farming techniques. Enoch, Enoch taught us how to fish. Enoch taught us all these wonderful things that God and the angels showed him how to do. Well, why we just running around eating fruit like Adam and Eve. Joshua took God so serious. That, that and he said, I refuse to leave until the walls fall. Joshua believed God. God. Joshua took God so serious that the wall of Jericho came tumbling down. Have you ever taken God so serious that the walls in your life came falling down? Have you ever taken God so serious that I refuse to move? Do God tell me to move? Have you ever taken God so serious that he said you're going to write a book one day and you already got your pen name written now? Have you ever taken God so serious that he said he was going to take you to the higher heights even though you live in the gutter? But you believe God and you take God serious and you got a backpack just in in case they call you today, you're ready because I take God serious. Can you say amen? Yeah. Jesus took God serious in the Garden of Gethsemane. Bishop, play something beautiful, please. Yeah, God, this is, this is a good dad I have. This is a good dad. I was always jealous of Brother Alfonso and Brandon. We get to play with each other. All right. I'm going to learn something. The piccolo will get up here and be like, <coughs> play with my dad. <laughs> Give me a couple of spoons. Uh, well, you know me, though. I'll probably have some tapioca with that spoon. And, you know, I'm not a plate of spoons. So I'm going to play something. Hallelujah. Church, I want you to take God serious today. You know what we take serious? We take the devil serious. Devil, we, we can look ourselves in the mirror and the devil come down and say, you don't look good at all. We believe it. Devil come down and say, you ain't never going to amount to nothing. We believe it. Take him serious. Devil come down and say, look at your children. They ain't never going to take him serious. They will come down and say, you know what, you, your children are going to be under the same curse that you're under. We take them serious. But today I want you to take God serious. The Bible says that the devil is a liar. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. So if the devil says that he's got your kids, then he's a liar. If the devil says you ain't going to amount to nothing, then he's a liar. If the devil says you ain't going nowhere, then he's a liar. If the devil says you're sick in your body, then he's a liar. And it's time to stop taking him serious and time to start taking God serious. I believe that it's body. I believe the people that are here, I believe the people within the sound of my voice are in a garden of Gethsemane experience. How you handle the garden is going to prove how you handle the crucifixion. God is asking you to kill some things in your flesh. God is asking you to stop, stop doing some things that you've been doing. God is asking you to change the scenario. God is asking you to be careful who you lean on. Be careful who you ask to tarry with you. Be careful who you ask to pray with you through the night because they might let you down. They might fail you. But God says you're in the garden. I want you to prepare for what's about to happen. I want you to prepare for the upcoming events. I want you to prepare for the storm. I want you to prepare uh, for the clouds. I want you to prepare for the rain. I want you to prepare for the crucifixion. You know what I learned through the Apostle Paul? That he says, I die daily, which means every day we got to crucify the flesh. You know what I prayed to Jesus the other day? I said, Lord, you had to die once, and yet you asked me to die. 
he said, I did it once because once is all I needed. And if you did it right the first time, <laughs> you wouldn't have to do it a second time. Ouch. If you did it all the first time, you wouldn't Ouch. have to do it a second time. Every well. time you go up to the cross, you miss a finger. Every time you go to the cross, you miss an imagination. Every time you go to the cross, you miss an emotion. Every time you go to the cross, you miss a person. Every time you go to the cross, you take just a little flesh with you. So die every day. Amen. But we're in our garden experience, and I want you now to take the word that God is giving you today serious. Because it's not just about a word of torment. It's not just about a word of stress. It's not just about a word of being beaten down. It's not just a word of coming to an end. It's not a word of being broke. It's not a word of being sick. It's not just a word of through the fight. But it's a word of peace. A word of victory. A word of glory. A word of honesty. Honesty. It's a word of honor. And it's a word of strength. I pray... I pray for you, and, and you know my prayer for you is, is that you don't get tired. You don't get tired. You can be wounded and not tired and keep fighting. You can be not wounded and get tired and stop fighting. Don't get tired. I pray, Lord, please don't let my wife get tired of me. Lord, please don't let my kids get tired of me. Don't let my family get tired of me. Because when they get tired of you, they get tired, then they can give up. They never get tired of you. If you never get tired, you'll keep fighting. So here's what God's doing. He's asking you to go through these scenarios so that you'll be clean. Just be clean. Just be clean. You know that he put the pancreas and he put the liver and he puts kidneys inside of your body. You know what it's for? It's, it's to clean out your blood. It's to clean out all the toxins. It cleans it out. Garden of Gethsemane is kind of a similar situation. It isolates you into a scenario where it's just you and God. See, even though the man Jesus tried to take his friends with him, he couldn't. Sometimes we try to take people with us. And God says, no, I need you to be alone because this is just for you. <laughs> this is a word for somebody. Listen, listen. God wants me to tell you that some family members, that there's some, some people... Let's see. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Every family has a different position. <clears throat> and you may be set as a watchman over your family, and you're watching your family go through some things, and you wonder, why can't they see what they're doing wrong? Why can't they see what they're going through? But you know what? They can't see because they aren't the watchman. You are. And because you are the watchman, you look over your family and you begin to see that, oh, there's trouble. There's trouble. That's trouble. I can see it. I'm calling it out. That's trouble. Why can't you see that that's trouble? Why can't you see that you shouldn't go there? Why can't you? Because they're not the watchman then, but you are. So then God sets you high upon a wall, separated from your family, so that all you can do is watch. But when you watch and you see the trouble, he says, pray and take me serious. Ooh, because some members of your family aren't watching. My God, Jesus, that was good. Hallelujah. He said, so just, just pray for them. And take my word seriously. So then, let me end. Then, so then, if this is, let me, let me give you a piece here, and I'll be quiet. Then, listen. So, so, so then, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane in in in, in the Greek, then uh, in the Hebrew, rather, means Gath Shemin, Gath Shemin, Gath meaning press. And Shemin meaning olive oil. The garden of pressing the olive oil. The garden of pressing the olive oil. So then as we are in our garden, we are being pressed. And as we are being pressed, the oil that inside of us is being pressed out. Right? So the garden of pressing olive oil. You know what the oil represents? The anointing. And the anointing will never come out of you until you're pressed. You'll never know who the hero is unless there is a villain. My God. You'll never know. 
You'll never know who will stick with you unless there is a problem. You'll never know who's got your back unless you've got to go through a scenario. So as God puts you through the scenario, as God begins to push you on every side, and it feels like your flesh is dying. It feels like you can't make it. It feels like you can't survive it. It feels like you can't go through it. It feels like you don't even want to be in your own skin because your flesh is objecting. Your flesh wants you to run, but your spirit tells you to stay. Your flesh wants to fall asleep, but your spirit says stay away. God serious. So then if God says you are more than a conqueror, I'd have been happy a conqueror. You are a conqueror. Thank you. He says, no, you are more than a conqueror. You know what happens? That when God begins to say, you are an overcomer, you are more than a conqueror, you are above and not below, you are the head and not the tail, you are first and not last, you are precious in my sight. You know what we do? We don't take him serious. No, because the last guy I was with told me I was ugly, so I'm ugly. The last relationship I was in didn't work out, so there must be something wrong with me. The last job I had fired me. The last time I had money, I can't even remember. And the kids don't listen to me, and the curse is over me. And I've passed it on to my kids, and yet the whole time, God is saying, you're not cursed, you're blessed. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. But we haven't taken the time to take God serious, because in the midst of the pressing, we haven't allowed the anointing to come out. But if you allow the anointing to come out and you take the pressing serious then no matter what God says you'll take it serious so today I called you here to say take God serious because you are wonderful because you are beautiful because you are amazing they were dumb to leave you. They were crazy to walk away. They were blind to see how good God has made you. They, 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 they just because they didn't believe in the investment of who you are doesn't mean that God doesn't believe in the investment of who you are. Just because they said you weren't going to make it doesn't mean God said it wasn't you aren't going to make it. Just because they said you'd fall and took look at their watch and said it's just a matter of time doesn't mean that God said it. He's here to uplift you. He's here to hold you up. It's time to shut the devil up and start taking God serious and start taking our experience serious and start taking every word that proceeds out the mouth of God serious because we are overcomers more than conquerors. We are victorious. We are battle tested. We are ready to win. We are more than amazing and we serve a God that is alive and if he said he's in me, then he's in me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. when you go home and pray just say this say Lord I take you serious go back at some of the notes that you've written and take them serious go back to some of the prophetic words that have been over your life and take it said to me in this fast over the next year he said to me take me serious take me serious take me serious be a people that are known to take God serious so if he asks you to build a boat in the middle of the desert take him serious if he asks you to step out and walk on water take him serious. If he anoints you king of kings, if he anoints you the Lamb Lord, go ahead and take it. Go ahead and receive it. Go ahead and take him serious. If you step onto the battle and you're outnumbered and you're outgunned and they got more people and they got more weapons and they deserve the job better than then you do and they deserve promotion more than you do and they got more education than you do. But God says you're the one. Take him serious. Day when we get ready to walk out that door and face the world, let's take it serious. Sound
Saturday, I went to a yard sale. And I've been looking for a little receiver there for my TV. And we went to the yard sale, and my wife convinced me to go with her to the yard sale. We went to the yard sale. And there was a brand new receiver in the box. And I said, yeah. I said, how much you want for this? And the lady says, $10. I said, my gosh, I got like $11. <laughs> I said, $10. I said, I'll take it. And then some crazy man out of nowhere I've never seen before. Said, I'll take it. And I said, no, we're going to buy it. He goes, I got the money right here. And the lady looked at me, and I looked for her for some help to say, well, he was here first. Money. And she said, she said, whoever gives me the money first. And since Pastor Missy did not allow me to walk around with money, I had to look for Pastor Missy. I said, we need the money. And he handed her the money. And he took it. Get that money. I came this close to beating him within an inch of his life. <laughs> <laughs> so I went home, angry. I, and I, normally I would get more angry, but man, you should saw my wife, man. She was, she was, you ain't got no class. You like the weekend. You got no class. You got no class. She's like, look at you. And she just went home. I went home, angry. I said, Lord, Lord, why, why didn't you treat me any old way? And he said, because I'm doing something in you. I'm hiding you right now. And they don't even know who you are. They don't even know in whose presence they're standing. But if you take me serious, my God, but if you begin to work on me and you, my God, if you begin to forgive and you begin to for, let go and you, for, you begin to just, just concentrate on me, then not only I'll bring you a hundred brand new receivers, I'll bring you so many receivers, you have to give them away for free. He said, but if you concentrate on me and if you take me serious, then one day you'll be in their presence and the conviction of the Holy Spirit will begin to fall and they'll say things like, I don't know why, but I think you should have it. I think you should take it. I think you need it more than I do. I don't know why, but there's something about you. There's a seriousness about you that I just want to I want to bless you. Can you can you, can you say amen? amen. So today today we take God serious. Bow your heads.